Janos are here. In this tutorial, I'll demonstrate the Morph Cut, which is a key new feature in the 2015 release of Adobe Premiere Pro. If you shoot a lot of interviews, you know the problem right away. In a phrase, jump cuts. When you have to piece together different components of an interview, they don't always match up. It's also a problem when you edit content out of a particular clip. And that's what I'm going to show you here. So this is a tutorial I did for video guys about the new tech TriCaster. And here's the original, the starting point. And let's listen in for just a second. Cameras and multiple camera operators to provide lots of pan and zooms. You can spend a fortune on all that, or you can get the same look for thousands less with the TriCaster Mini. In this tutorial, which was sponsored by VideoGuys.com, I'll show you how. Okay, so let's assume I want to cut out this portion here where I talk about the new tech TriCaster, and this portion here where I talk about Video Guys. So here's the tutorial with the cuts. Operators to provide lots of pan and zooms. In this tutorial, I'll show you how. So we see the cut points here. Zooms. In pretty big jump cut there. Tutorial, I'll show you how. Pretty big jump cut there. So to apply the morph cut, you go to the effects, search for it if you'd like. I've searched for it the MORP. Here it is in the dissolve folder, and you apply it. And let's apply it to this one. Oops. Like any transition, you can center it or place it on either side. And then Premiere analyzes. And this takes about, you know, depending on the speed of your computer, it takes anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute on this uh, eight core old Mac Pro. And then once the analysis is finished, you probably want to render the entire work area. Hi. Okay, so now we're ready to preview. Lots of pan and zooms. In this tutorial, I'll show you how. So that looks really, really natural. And let's go to some different experiments that I tried down here. So this is pretty much what we just saw. Provide lots of pan and zooms. In this tutorial, it looks very, very natural as we just saw. And this is the second transition. Second transition is a bit tougher because if we look here, we see that we don't have a lot of wiggle room. It's really tight on this edge. It's really tight on this edge. This first transition, you had some pausing there, some pausing there. This one's going to be tough to get. So let's look and see what we ended up with. Tutorial, I'll show you how. This tutorial, I'll show you how. Okay, so it doesn't look like a jump cut. It might look like I have a little bit of a twitch, but it's definitely better than what we started with. And I just wanted to show you that this is not a, it's not a total turnkey operation. You're going to have to work hard to get the best results. And, and what that means is you're going to have to adjust both where you place the cut and the duration of the transition. Let me show you what I mean from a duration standpoint. So looking at the second transition, this is a five second transition. And although it's a bit jerky, you know, it, it, it could pass as, okay, that looks pretty normal. Tutorial, I'll show you how. Now, if we do the same effect at a 15 frame transition, pan and zooms. In this tutorial, I'll show you how. I don't know what's going to come across when you actually view this video online, but it's a little bit of stuttering. The, the, um, because the morph occurred over 15 frames, you lose a piece of that lip sync. Let me, let me go to full screen here and see if I can show that a little bit better. I'm going to press the, I guess it's the ampersand key. Oops. Select this first. And let's play this. Tutorial, I'll show you how. Do you see how you lost a little bit of lip sync there? In this tutorial, I'll show you how. And that's because we used a 15 frame transition here. And let's look at the same view here. Tutorial, I'll show you how. So again, you get a little bit of a twitch, but you don't get the same um, obvious loss of sync that you got with the 15 frame transition. And let's look at what happens if you have the cuts in the wrong place. So here's the first cut, and here I've got them really close together. And let me go to full screen here. And so this is with a really close together cut on the first transition. In this tutorial. And then we have, we have a very sharp cut. Zooms. In this tutorial. It, it doesn't look anywhere near as smooth as what we have up here. In this tutorial. So 
So that's because I cut them too close together. If I cut it too far apart, we get a different look. And this And did you see that little wiggle there? That's because we have a longer transition and because the, uh, the, the cut points on the individual file are in a different place. Bottom line is it's not a turnkey effect. You're going to have to experiment with, the, um, with the, the transition duration and you're going to have to experiment with the cut placement. But overall, you know, it, it worked pretty well on a lot of my tests. And then I also looked at a, a much tougher test case. So this is shooting outside. Adobe recommends using this on a static background with a single talking head. So I have four use cases here, you know, just four different cut points. And this is, this is without the morph cut. And we see a, you know, a pretty big jump cut there. And then this is with the morph cut. So it's, you know, if you go through it slowly, you can see the morphing that's taking place. So I don't know, every producer's different. This may be acceptable, it may not be acceptable. The alternative is always like a very obvious cut. And you just have to make your own decision as to whether that's a bit, you know, I use the cube zoom a lot for that. You know, I want people, if, if it's not totally seamless, I want to make it very, very obvious so that the jump cut doesn't appear. So here's the original. Very obvious jump cut. The microphone. And then, you know, that looks like you can almost see the morph going on. And again, this is what Adobe tells you not to do. There's, there's a moving background back here. It's a very challenging shot. And let's look at some of the other before and after. This is uh, another example. Can power that device. Okay. Again, a pretty obvious jump cut. Power that can power that device. And that's, a, you know, definitely an improvement, right? Although you can, if you look carefully enough, you can almost see the morph that's going on, you know, because I've, I've moved positions subtly. I guess I moved away from or, or forward into the camera during that, um, during the, 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 the second or so that I cut out. Okay, so where does that leave us? In some scenes, particularly those with the static background, the morph cut transition will seamlessly eliminate jump cuts, though you may have to experiment to get there. And every editor who works with interviews will find this a great new tool that will make their footage look better and possibly eliminate the need to reshoot. I'm Jan Ozer. Thanks for watching.